Um, he's taking the same approach as Cialini, but applying it uh, from a different perspective. So he has uh, the before action, during the action, after the action. The action, uh, for that, we, we can exchange the word for um, Now, he mentions um, another guy, uh, this is Dan Ariely, and you're most, most probably um, familiar with his experiments. Um, one of the most famous ones is the, is the setting expectations one where, where he's anchoring, it's called the anchoring. So he's anchoring the price here. You can get like a basic subscription, which is online only for 59, um, the, the print subscription for 125, and the, the print and web subscription for 125. Of course, this was a mistake, um, and people were uh, signing up for this package, so uh, where you get the print and web at the same time for 125. When they fixed the, the error, uh, the conversion rate was much lower, and it actually damaged um, the revenue stream for economists. Um, and this is a good example of anchoring. So they set the, the, the anchor for the, the price up there, and suddenly the 125 seemed like a bargain. Um, so how can we apply anchoring in product design? Um, this is um, this is the I can't remember what it was called the application on Android that tracks your mm -hmm. uh, yeah I, I don't remember um, yeah. yeah okay that one <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it tracks your daily movements and you know how many steps you do very similar to this and um, you know now this is this is a very good anchoring. Uh, because it almost feels like um, the goal is one hour and that's, that is something you should do, but no one really said that you should do that. It's actually, they're anchoring a default. So it, you almost feel like many people do it for one hour, many people walk around for one hour, but it might not be true. It's just like the, the way how they anchor the, the goal. And the same goes for this one. So this, you know, this is medium and they assume I'm, I'm drinking, uh, which is, yeah, not far from the truth. But the thing is, um, so they are suggesting me some trends, and this is um, uh, another way how to anchor stuff. So these are the defaults for other people, so they must be default for you. So you think this is the right thing to do, the right thing to read. So um, the, de the smart defaults are actually part of the anchoring. Now another concept is called framing. So you would, you would more likely like to eat, uh, you know, 90% green meat than the 10% fat one, right? Um, um, so yeah, it's just like it's, uh, the framing is setting the, the negative away and, and instead uh, framing it positively. Uh, so, you know, it's the same with the organic stuff. So, it's, it, they wouldn't never mention on tomato that it's non organic or something, right? Um, so yeah, it's the same thing. Now, uh, how can we apply framing in product design? Um, again, I'm going to take the same example. So you could, they could say, I have 59 minutes left today, and will be even better than setting the goal for one hour, right? So because you're framing positively, you're going to end this torture soon, uh, which is good. Um, and uh, so it's just like applying different perspectives. Now another method is priming effect. Um, so uh, there was this one thing, that, one movie that was always uh, on TV during Easter in Slovakia, that's where I come from, and that movie was with Arnold Schwarzenegger and was called Kindergarten Cop? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. So this is the, the scene from the movie and you see there are some rowdy tips out there. And there's a, the priming effect is, if you would hang the, the pictures of library in this room, they were more likely to act calm because they feel like this is the right thing to do because they automatically um, connect the concept of Latin library and being silent to to you know their behavior. Uh, so yeah, that was uh, that was uh, what was happening usually uh, during the Easter. So if you could think about one single vegetable that can grow in a garden, uh, you know, think about it right now. And I'm going to give you an answer. Uh, so I think you were thinking about this. You know why? Because you, are you thinking about carrots? Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, so the, the way how I primed your mindset was uh, because I sent out the message on the meetup group tonight, today, that I was mentioning to bring in uh, orange or uh, green uh, colors. So that was a priming effect in practice. 
um, not to bring those markers or those, those sharpies, actually. Then um, I was uh, talking about Easter, and you saw a carrot cake before, right? Um, and this is all those associations that were kind of like priming your mind towards this element where forcing you to think about carrots because it was just easier. Even this picture was tinted in orange color, so you get that association with the brain. Um, it doesn't work for everyone, but 80% um, people were thinking about carrots. Can, can we see how many did think about carrots, like brains, carrots? I thought of carrots. Yeah. Who didn't? Who did you think of? <laughs> Of okay. tomatoes. Uh, it was tomatoes. Yeah, the next one was I made a mistake because I mentioned tomatoes. <laughs> so it's not perfect, okay? Uh, so another, another good example would be I was asking for donations. We've got money in the jar already. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's also smart defaults. If you had like, you know, if, if it would have meant that something would be even better, but it was like banknotes. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, so how can you apply fragging in a, in a digital design uh, and digital products? So this is a LinkedIn sign up page. Um, and, you know, you're kind of expected to, uh, the next thing you do in, in you know, in applications like this is connect with your friends or reach out to someone you, who you doesn't know, you don't know. And this is this is a great example of how they prime on this specific screen and said, hey, who's this guy? He's looking out the window. It doesn't make it too much sense, but if they had like, I, I took that random stock picture. If they had like a picture um, of, of a handshake, um, they will most probably have better effect on the upcoming task. So, um, but, you know, that's the effect of priming that could be applied in practice. Now, if you find the attitudes, that's the second step. Um, I'm going to uh, tell you a little bit of story here. Uh, so we had a we had a car for the weekend, uh, and uh, we decided to go to uh, Steveston after lunch and a coffee. We go back to a car, but it wasn't there anymore. Uh, so <laughs> we were completely shocked, and we were helplessly wandering around trying to figure out what to do. Now, a person, and you can imagine, like two like random people standing in the middle of the parking lot, <laughs> and we were like. Like we didn't know what to do, um, and now a person stopped by and asked us whether we need some help. We asked for police phone phone number, telling her that we think our car got stolen or towed away, and we were panicking. Um, so this is not a car. I wish it was. Um, so she not only gave us the number, but called them for us. And um, after finding out the car was stowed away, uh, we asked her shyly whether she was uh, she has a cab number so we can get. To that place where they stole the car, where they towed the car, um, and yes, yeah, after a bit of a chatting, she actually offered us to give us a ride to that place, which was like 30 minutes away. So it was a very good deal on her side. Now that effect is called foot in the door, and we were doing it consciously, but it's actually a foot in the door principle. So, so we asked for a small request, uh, followed by a medium request, and eventually uh, ended up in a large request. Now. Uh, the effect works like this, so there's like a probability of, uh, or likelihood that the person will um, uh, comply with the first request, 70%, and it goes down 50% for medium request, and 10% for the large request, in this good and low principle. So, so she was more likely to say no, to call police for us, and you know, after that she we wouldn't get to this point. But you know, it, it kind of made this as, an, as a very, kind of like 10% like is not that bad. And um, so, yeah, it was like this. So notice those numbers and remember them because we're going to talk about them a little bit later. Now, what was happening is, was a fight between attitudes and behavior. Um, and that fight is never, um, even, though we, even if we realize that that thing is happening and, and we know that the, the practice works like that, like theming model, you're already accustomed to things like this. So they, they kind of like challenge you and you, you get involved and you're, we know that this is going to happen, but we are still kind of, we still can't resist. We are still being persuaded. So, so uh, yeah, this is this is uh, how we are shifting our attitudes. So we justify our behavior later on. So just like just like that person uh, who offered us the ride, she was justifying her behavior. Now these people are are 
you know, kind of like desperate and they look desperate and I, I wouldn't like to be in their situation. I shouldn't help them. I don't know them. But she was thinking about this stuff all the time. They must have been, you know, kind of like that in her, in her mind. And now the thing is, um, so she was fighting the, the, the attitudes um, and she was justifying her behavior. And she justified it by, by that deed and she took us to the, that spot and to the, to the towing spot, to the towing company parking, whatever. It was really good. And we were really happy when <laughs> that happened. And she managed to uh, fail her fight <laughs> between attitudes and, and behavior. Now, the same practice is with, uh, with the uh, customer loyalty part. So when you have this, you're more likely to go to the same place. Um, and you're being persuaded on, on or when you have one of these in your own wallet, just like I do, right? And you can see it's working out well for me uh, because I always return to these places. Um, now the same principle can be reversed, um, and the way how it works is is like this. So um, you stop. This is oh, wait. Oh, sorry. This is a foot and door. Okay. So um, yeah, the foot and door principle of product design is usually the onboarding experience. So we start with something small, and you, and you you go through it uh, one by one. Uh, so. You know, this is Pocket. Uh, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the app, but it lets you read uh, stuff that you saved before. And you need to go through, usually in your boarding experience, it shows you what you can do, and then you, uh, then you do it. Um, there's a better way how to do this. Jump straight into the application and understand by, by having it in the interface. Um, but onboarding is basically a good example of the door because they are giving you small tasks uh, at, at first and then you're converting to data tasks. And um, the same, you know, this could be the first first page in Pocket instead. So, if, you know, you have the first save page, you have that first request done, and then you could uh, continue uh, working out with the, with the larger request later on. Um, now, what would happen if we reverse the effect? So we would start with the large request, then we would have the medium request, and we would have the small request in the end. Uh, so you know, we, would stand in, we are standing on the parking lot, empty parking lot, and you know, the, the woman approaches us and she asks her, we would like to, um, what, what is happening? And we would be like, hey, we don't know where our car is, but could you give us a ride? And she would be like, no, <laughs> what the hell? So what's the, what's the likelihood of this happening? Um, yeah, there, there might be some crazy people who offer you a ride, of course. But um, after the rejection, you could ask her to, to call the police. Now, calling the police at that moment would seem like a, like a good, good bargain, right? So I didn't give them a ride. She feels a little bit guilty. She, she would call, she would be more likely to call the police for us. So we would present the meeting request. Um, afterwards. And a uh, small request, if she rejected that medium request, she would be almost 100% sure she would give us the phone number for, for, uh, for police in Richmond. Yeah. Uh, the same uh, principle appears in, uh, in uh, restaurant menus. So whenever you have uh, the, the top item, um, the top entree is, is the most expensive one, and then they present the cheaper options. So that's the, the, the door in the face principle. So it feels like the, the other cheap, cheaper options are a good bargain in comparison to the first one. Um, now, how can we apply this in product design? Obviously, uh, the pricing models, this is like the most A-B tested thing ever. Everyone tries to, 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 to make this work, although you know, it might be as easy as this, trying to mix it up. It's not easy to compare stuff if you do this, but um, it, it kind of sets uh, the framing uh, or the, you know, kind of like anchoring for the rest of those uh, options. So, um, for example, this one is, uh, is the same uh, principle, so go in the face. Um, you see the big request is to lose five programs. I don't know how many pounds is that. Um, and if you, if you walk 20 minutes more a day, um, which is kind of like a small task, right? So it's like the secondary um, task in the, in the whole flow. Now it feels like that is something achievable and you wouldn't, wouldn't need to work hard to, to get that. That would be more important actually if I could lose five kilos. Um, now you can experiment with this. Um, um, based on the rejection or not rejection, 
not rejection on the <coughs> first request, you can add and reduce time in between and therefore maximize the effect even more. So after they reject the first request, you could wait a couple of minutes, a couple of days, and send out an email inviting them back. So kind of refreshing them, redo some things. This is this is uh, used a lot, so you can experiment with this. Now consistency um, is again part of the fighting attitudes. So people like to be consistent and we honor our word. Um, and whenever we commit to do something, we would like to be consistent with that, right? So um, one way how this was abused was, and uh, this is from Nick Lendlitz's book again, uh, car dealerships. So they were, um, they were changing the rules. They would you know, agree with, the, with some car, car dealer um, that we were going to buy this car, and he'd go um, to, to ask his manager whether it's, uh, it's okay, and he's going to come back and say, no, no, actually, we need to add a you know, two grand more. And he'd be like, oh, okay, we pay two grand more. But you get the picture. It, it's like changing the rules in, in the middle of the, the process, which is never good, but people like to stay consistent, so they would kind of try to avoid that. This is called wall balling. So when you're kind of using the trickery to sneak in something that is not supposed to be there, so you're changing the rules of the game. Uh, a good good example of this is like everywhere on the internet, <laughs> but I'm going to talk about uh, product design um, and this time about running app uh, because I don't do any sports and this is a good example. I have no clue about this stuff. Uh, so this is. Uh, uh, and yeah. Um, now, this could be um, tweaked a little bit. Um, they could use a little small line to motivate you to, to run, you know, one kilometer more based on your pace. So it could be a little bit motivational on that. After you usually run your 6K, it will tell you, oh, you know what, you can run a 200 meters more and that will help you, right? So it's, uh, it's uh, changing the game on the fly. And actually, some applications are doing that. This is Zombies Run. Um, so it motivates you by running, you're building your base here. And, uh, and it's very engaging because suddenly you have goal, but you run more in order to build a better base, right? Uh, so they are pushing the limits. Um, they're, they're automatically detecting your base and they're giving you incentives to, to work harder for, for a better goal. So, and it's, you know, it's very, um, very emotional as well because it kind of tells you uh, in your headphones that you know, some, some groups are uh, running after you. So it's really good, really good as well. Um, now, social pressure, this is the big one. But I think it's the largest of these practices um, as we're gonna see in the, in the workshop part. Um, there, is a, there is an experiment um, about social pressure um, setting up the social norm is the first one. So um, there are two, two signs in a, in a university campus. Um, and which one do you think works better? Or, or you know, drink safely. So drink, you know, if you want to drink safely, which one would work better? What, what do you think? Second one. Obviously, yeah, the second one. Uh, because it, it, it creates a norm that drinking is like that one creates actually some kind of elitist society, so you feel like those people are uh, cool when they're drinking, whereas this one is saying, okay, you're drinking, but be safe, stay safe. So um, it's setting the social norm differently, so it's, it's desired behavior setting, and that one is um, trying to fight the problem instead. Now, um, another thing is reciprocity and flattery. Um, Reciprocity is a principle when someone offers you a favor, you want, you're more likely to give it back and, and to give back. And uh, flattery is complimenting someone um, will increase your likability, which is another uh, principle from Chaldini's book. Now, this is you know something that will make you like, why don't you bless them with your wisdom, create an awesome idea. So it's like that, that, that thing you think it's cheesy, it doesn't work, it always works. Everyone likes to be, be somehow. Uh, Kind of like encouraged and like to hear this stuff, even though they know that they are being persuaded. So this is from uh, from one of the products uh, that I'm working on right now. Um, it's not the final copy, Olivia can tell. <laughs> um, another 
uh, application of reciprocity, which is return of the favor, is you know Lyft, for example, they, they send you these emails. How many times I had uh, $50 credit? <laughs> Seriously, uh, it doesn't work for me, right? Um, so they want me to return the favor. They <laughs> they want me to return the favor really, really bad. Uh, now. Uh, another thing is similarity and belonging to some group, um, sense of belonging. Um, so similarity, um, this is, I can't read this, but um, it, should, it should say uh, max three items per person. So you would like, I can't, I don't know, I can't tell what this is, but um, now this, what this does is it tells you that this, is, this thing is in high demand, so people want to buy that. Um, it tells you, you know, if you can read this, that uh, you can only pick three of those items, so it's really sought after, and it's in Chinese, so it belongs to a group. This, this is very smart, actually. Even though I can't read it, but it's really smart that they did that. Did that. Um, so, uh, you know, they're, they're doing something right. Um, so similarity in product design can be applied like this. Um, all kinds of likes, like buttons, kudos, uh, uh, whatever favorites. Uh, this is creating that group of people that are liking this product or, um, or uh, are uh, kind of like trying to push this product forward or appreciating the content. So um, yeah, most popular stuff, charts like that, kind of brings that. Now what would you do if you want to improve that perception of an item, um, of this item in particular, I want to uh, raise the price because that's, you know, it's max three per, per three items per person and people are kind of like buying them like crazy. So you want to increase the price. You can't do that, right? Because they, they wouldn't buy it anymore. They would understand that this is a trickery. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so what would you do? These are a set of practices that you can do because you don't want that change to be visible. So in order to make, uh, to encompass the change blindness, uh, you can do you can do this. Um, so you can expose the outcome. So what's the, the, the future going to be like? Um, then you can uh, in, incrementally change this stuff. So you can one small tweak at a time improve. Introduce one small tweak, small tweak at a time. Then you can prevent side by side comparison. If there is any proof of uh, comparing something side by side, get rid of it. Otherwise, they would see the change uh, happening. Uh, just like I'm going to show you a moment, in a moment. And uh, yeah, um, and lastly, uh, you know, you can uh, uh, give them something um, like that will uh, kind of hold, like like you can give them candy so they would, uh, wouldn't see the bad stuff. Um, so for example, Amazon, good example. Now you could compare. So I'm going to go through them briefly. This is taken from from archive.org, and you can see the changes are not that huge actually. Right, so they have these sort of boxes. They always keep some elements, and they are changing other stuff. Um, so you know, notice these how they are lined up here on the side, and the uh, big change was uh, in the navigation this time. So they change this, but these boxes still stay the same. And uh, and again, changing the navigation, things are the same. And this is the most recent version. They are A/B testing this. Um, and, uh, and this is another version here. So you see, they're A/B testing this part here. They added something, so it's it's really cool. Now, uh, tweaking the request uh, is another um, part of the persuasive tactic by Linda, um, and you can do that by uh, changing these things. So changing the ability and motivation um, on the trigger. So. Um, People evaluate your proposed task or request in two ways. Uh, and motivation, when motivation is low and ability is low, um, they would most probably fail. Uh, but the thing about this, we are already covered this, right? Um, but the thing about this thing is, um, whenever they have something like this, they switch. So uh, they switch their thinking into more visual and more conceptual rather than thorough thinking, so they're not thinking about the, the actual application, but instead they are thinking about, oh, these are very nice pictures, right? 
this one is very nice as well. I like the red. You, you have no idea what this is about, so you switch your thinking into more visual rather than like you're not trying to comprehend it at all. So if you're interested in this, it's uh, the logic of quantum mechanics take two. Um, so, and the same goes with this. They don't want people to read this stuff. So that's why they, they, they use the lawyerish stuff, uh, lawyerish words, and no one can read that. Um, and there was a, actually a proof. Um, one time they, 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 uh, they, they, they kind of like mentioned one of the sentences, a price for this part. Like you could win a price if you send an email. It was hidden in the terms and conditions, and it took 3,000 people um, to, to notice it. Uh, then, you know, what happens here is you switch your model, um, you switch your thinking into, you start to kind of think about it thoroughly. So you start to understand the concepts, and then you start to um, start to think about whether that is actually true. So the same thing goes for this, right? This, you would read that quantum mechanics thing like this, right? And you start to think about it, and you start to think whether that makes sense. Does it make sense? No, <laughs> of course not, but you understand it right now. So that's because you have the high ability and high motivation, hopefully. Um, so, yeah, you examine it a couple times just to be sure that this thing actually works, that you calculated it properly. Um, now, if you are, you know, what can, you can do to get to the green dot um, is grab user's attention, user's attention, increase the request relevance, and you can do that by storytelling or, or you know, trying to point out that the users. Um, and the outcome is the thoughtful examination. So you start to think and comprehend what you're thinking, what you're reading, so you can understand. Whereas here, the outcome is the mindless examination. So you would be like, okay, it's very nice, a lot of pictures, I like that. Um, that's why I have so many pictures here, because it's a difficult topic. Um, so yeah. Um, um, if you're in the green dot, um, you should focus on argument strength. So people who are reading the content should be able to find the details they're looking for. And those people who are not reading the content because it seems um, like very complicated, um, you should focus on perception. So make it, um, make it visually appealing. Now, I tweet this poster. Um, so it's... Uh, this one is, uh, this billboard, sorry. Uh, this one is actually uh, for those people who are uh, trying to comprehend, and the visuals is for those who don't understand, right? So, tweak, tweak that a little bit. Um, now, how can you apply argument strength in product design? Well, this, this is any kind of security center, any place where you can, uh, when you can play around with the settings, that's where you want to um, highlight the, the comprehension factor. So you want them to understand this. You want to have as many information as you can. Don't worry about reading. You can have like a paragraph of text here. They would be happy to read that at this point because they are uh, specifically seeking for something and they are specifically trying to understand it. So this is the place where you can explain stuff. They need to be really uh, reassuring and, and these things need to provide as much info as, as possible. So, um, arguments perception, on the other hand, is something like this. This is not an easy thing. Contact card, contact cards, lend your own information about someone with what that person is sharing. But it's not easy. And they provide you with this fancy graphics. And you're like, ah, that's nice. And you click through that, you go and you think about it. So they want you to skip this part. Because you're there actually spying on you, and this is the way they tell you, and they're kind of like, okay. No, we are fine with you, and you are fine with that because you saw that. Um, so they want you to, to go through this quickly. That's why you see all these fancy pictures and all the, the, the Google products nowadays. Because they want you to go through that quickly. They want you to understand, and they want to have their, their um, you know, nothing on their account. So this is, this is all good. You're good, and they're good as well. Now, what to do to motivate more? And that is the, the, I think the last point. Um, no, he had some. Um, so you can do this. You can have some incentive. Um, you can have some limitation. You would say, no, 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 don't eat the last cookie in the cookie jar. And the kid would eat it anyway. 
And you know, that's the limitation of freedom. Then you can have commodity theory, so the scarcity and deadlines. I'm going to